This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. So you uh, found something pretty special in your car while cleaning out the back yesterday. Yeah, so usually when I fill up my gas tank, I'll check for garbage in the back seat and just Mm. empty out all the trash. (laughs) I make it sound like it's just a dumpster dumpster back there, which it is. But I looked in the trunk for the first time in a long time, and I hit the jackpot. I found a six-pack of toilet paper. Nice. I know. Where would you have gotten that from? Like at the start of the pandemic when people were loading up on TP, you're like, I better get the six-pack from the gas station. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Shoppers has some six-packs too. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, good for you. I know. Here's the question. Do you uh, take that six-pack inside? Or do you maybe leave, take five inside and leave one in the car? Because maybe it was there for a reason. No, you don't need a roll of tickets because you just use your fast food napkins. No, that doesn't get it done. I've tried that. (laughs) (laughs) 780-784-7107. Jordan, you found cash? So I was driving back from Jasper snowboarding one day and had my tire blow out while driving back and pull over and get out this gear to put on the spare and drive away and when I open up the kit with all the tools in it there's 200 just sitting there and I'm guessing that the person who I bought the car from put it in there in case that something went wrong and they needed money to get their car towed or something. That's such a smart idea. Do you think that they left it for you Jordan or they a couple months later they're like oh crap I forgot that 200 (laughs) bones. Well, considering that the car when I bought it was worth eight and I paid two thousand for it, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that they did not leave me extra money. I basically ripped them off already. So, <laughs> some homemade nunchucks. Yeah, Ryan said he found them in a car that he bought. This seems to be um, the trend. It's what you found in a car that was previously owned by right. someone else. <laughs> uh, yours is actually not your car. Fire away, Rachel. My mom has like a whole farmer's market. In her trunk. So are we talking apple pies? Yeah. I'm not even kidding. The woman will have like mustard and ketchup and toilet paper and paper (laughs) towel all the time. She's got microfiber cloth. She'll have like peaches and apples. She's got a big collection of jarred things in the back. Does she have a can opener? Yes. Oh, she will have a can opener and a turkey baster and a whisk. She'll have slotted food. I'm not joking. She's got shelving units in her trunk. So if we need anything, when she comes into town, she's like, let me just get the trunk. Come back here and tell me if there's anything you need. I'm not even kidding you. It sounds like your mom's car is more well stocked than my kitchen. And she only has a Camry. (laughs) Imagine if she had like a Cadillac. (laughs) An SUV. Yeah. (laughs) Play 107. So there was a photographer just walking around trying to find some cool things to photograph. Came across this bridge in India, took a picture of a man on a rowboat, and the boat was filled with empty bottles and garbage from the water. The picture itself is really beautiful. He posted it on Facebook, and it went viral. But not only did the picture go viral, the caption as well, because he started talking to the guy that was in the boat. Turns out he was paralyzed from the waist down since he was five years old from polio. Okay. But he drags himself to the river every day, gets in his little boat, picks out all of this garbage, which comes to about 17 cents, which can pay for him to have one meal a day. Wow. And he says he loves doing it not only to get some food, but he knows it's better for the environment. So this post went viral. And the prime minister of the Indian prime minister saw it himself, made a radio broadcast about it. So that made it go even more viral. Ever since then, he has a motorized wheelchair. They helped build him a new house. And they got him a new motorized um, boat boat as well. How cool is that? Awesome. Yeah. Tell me something good. My story is a big medical breakthrough. Researchers in Japan have developed the first wearable device to precisely monitor jaundice, uh, which can be very scary in newborns. And it's like the leading cause of death and brain damage in infants in low and middle income countries. So this device is put on the baby as soon as they're born, Mm -hmm. and it just gives the medical professionals a heads up. I know my daughter was born 
with jaundice. I think it's very common in babies as well. Right. And it was, uh, I think it was like even half a day or so after we had taken her home that it started to, like, she seemed like a little bit yellow Mm -hmm. with reddening of eyes. So we took her back and they gave us one of those lights, which easily can fix the problem in most situations if you have access to that. So this would just give the medical professionals like more of a heads up so that they can treat the jaundice before the babies go home, which in low and middle income um, countries can be tricky to get back to the hospital and stuff, right? Wow. And it's just a little device that goes on the baby's skin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For the first few hours and and gives people a heads up. So anyway, they're saying it's a massive breakthrough. Thought I'd share it. Tell me something. I'm always interested in how quickly things change when it comes to uh, decor, renovations, things like that. Yeah, like I was interested in looking up the barn sliding doors at one point, and then I saw this blog from this really prestigious home decorator that said they're already on the way out. I was like, what? But that what do you mean? happens very fast. Like the, yeah. the color black, everybody's all about it. And then a year later, they're like, mm, black's out. Well, how am I supposed to paint over that? And I've seen a trend now where there's a lot of people that do home design that are making fun of subway tile in kitchens, like the white subway tile. And that's like, been a staple. But it looks good. Right. What do you mean? It's too generic for you? I think it looks really fresh and it clean. Feels to me like most of these things are people that are like a little bit bored and they want to get some hits on their blog. So they say something controversial, but then it kind of takes off. At the end of the day, whatever you want to do with your home, if it brings you joy, who cares? Okay. That's what you say, but I really like the green carpet in my living room. Well, that's a crime. And you're constantly on me. I'm not the one that's Uh, constantly on you. Our listeners are. Every single time you, me, or our roommate Grant posts a video in that room, they're like, what's with your carpet? When are you pulling that out? You're also. What's under it? So let's not pretend like you're, do whatever you'd like. It makes you feel good. (laughs) All right. uh, We need to get a professional on to talk about a new trend in 2021 that is just ridiculous. So we've got uh, Lisa's sister, Kristen, on the phone. Okay, go ahead. Uh, No doors on bathrooms. Yeah, that's a good one. Hey. You've seen this before? Yes, I have. And they're calling it like the open concept, but for bathrooms. Um, yes. There's so- a, there's also something called a water closet. So the toilet is in its own room. What? Oh. The toilet is in a separate room at the back of the bathroom. Oh, I like Whoa. that. So just the toilet with probably a really good fan. And then the rest of the bathroom is open concept. That's right. Yeah, that makes more sense. So that's what you've seen. You haven't seen an actual toilet when you come around a corner in a house. Um, Well, a poorly designed bathroom, maybe, but no. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So are you on board or off board with the open concept bathroom? Um, I would like to have a bath by myself. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't Uh, like the bath that I put in my bedroom either then? (laughs) Uh, No. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Yeah. If anyone wants some decor tips, my sister just started a business. Hit us up on the text line. I'll send you her Instagram. It's got a bunch of periods in it, so it's hard to say it on air. Or uh, feel free to reach out to me personally because (laughs) I put a bathtub in my bedroom. So I'm constantly thinking, what's next? You know, not what's now. I know what's next. Pull out the green carpet. No. Yeah. When you get together with the ladies, do you toot in front of your friends? That's a really good question. Because like when guys get together, it's pretty much like an orchestra (laughs) with the amount of body noise that happens. (laughs) This guy's playing the tuba. This guy's on the trombone. Like most of the time, it's not like, (laughs) look what I did. You just do it and you move on. No one even talks about it. Honestly, that's kind of what happens. And then when a lady enters the room, there's just your one friend who still thinks (laughs) it's funny. (laughs) And everybody else is a bit more respectful. That is so accurate. It's ridiculous. It's interesting to me because when I get together with my group of girlfriends, we will be in the same bathroom getting ready and go number one right. while there are other women in the room. But I can't recall a time that we sat around and just let them buck. 
<laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I well, just can't. No, don't even... apologize. I'm just wondering. At 780-784-7107. Okay. Yep, quick poll. Hit us up with when you and your group of ladies are together. How does that shake down for you? What, what's the toot and sitch? I'm uh, getting a, quite a mixed reaction yeah. on the text line. And I I also have a question because we got like this from Crystal. I don't care who's around. I let them rip her day. And then we had a bunch of people say like, no, never. Can Crystal and let's say someone else like Haley who said, I've never farted in front of my friends. Can they be in the same click? Like, can they roll together or do you end up building friendship groups with people that feel the same you do about flatulence? You're asking the wrong person. That's a great question for our listeners, though. Do you have that one person in your group of friends that doesn't care, whereas the rest of you are more? Because you said you and your girlfriends don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe we're just not that gassy. Maybe my group of girlfriends, we're just not a gassy okay. crew. Yeah, you'd like to think. <laughs> Where are you at, Jess? I'm personally not comfortable, like, tooting in front of anyone. Like, it's not, like, my best friends, my parents, my husband, my kids, like, no one. And I just hate that it's always, like, oh, my gosh, who did that? Oh, my gosh, it was you. It was you, wasn't it? It was you. And I just, I can't handle that pressure, so I just don't. <laughs> well, especially when it's never you. that Like, you're always getting roped into the blame game, and you know it wasn't you. Exactly. And it always ends up getting pinned on me anyways, so I just avoid it. I, I want to know how far back the saying, you smelt it, you dealt it, goes like were they doing that back in the victorian days yeah. <laughs> probably further than we could possibly imagine i believe back then it was if you smell to fit you dealt to fit though <laughs> oh yes yes that sounds correct i believe i read that somewhere <laughs> time for a spelling bee with uh, some tickets to a very cool event up for grabs yeah imagine van gogh is happening at the expo center starting march 27th so if you're a big fan of art this is for you. It's really cool. We're going to have tickets all week. Who's this? Jessica. Jessica, you are our contestant today. Woohoo! How's your spelling? Well, could be all right. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we'll see. It doesn't sound like you're very confident. Hey, hey, we want her to win, Ryder. Quit being no. so competitive. No. Never. <laughs> all right. So today I have a list of famous artists. I'm going to give you their last name. And it's you versus Ryder. Whoever can spell more correctly wins. Okay. We're going to start off with who this exhibit is all about. Can you spell Van Gogh? V-A-N-G-O-U-G-H. Oh, that's wrong. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> V-A-N-G-O-G-H. Oh, there's no you. I was going to say, I thought Lisa was going to call you out because you didn't say space. I was like... <laughs> Wow, you're getting pretty intense. Okay. Okay, Ryder. Spell Warhol. W-A-R-H-O-L. That is correct. One nothing, Jessica. Uh Uh-oh. Welcome to my world. Jessica, you've got this. (laughs) Okay, I got this. Picasso. P-I-C-A... No, I don't even know this one. (laughs) You've got it right so far. Picasso. P-I-C-A-S-S-O. That's correct. Nice work. Oh, you got to believe in yourself My a little bit more. Running in the background. I got this. I got this. Oh. <laughs> K Ryder. Michelangelo. Michelangelo. M I C H A E L A N G O. That is wrong. Michael. Sorry. It's M I C H E L A N G O. Okay, bring it home, Jessica. You've got this. So she gets it, she wins? Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> Jessica, spell Banksy. B A N K S Y. Shh. <laughs> Banksy? Banksy. B A N K S Y? Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, Jessica. You have won tickets to go check out Imagine Van Gogh at the Expo Center. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It is time for Unsung Heroes, where we give shout-outs to people, places, and things that don't always get the attention or notoriety they deserve. Shout-out to my Botox for wearing off. Now people will be able to see how my furrowed brow really feels about them again. (laughs) Shout-out to the light dusting of snow for covering up those frozen dog turds for another day. Nice. Yard looks nice. 
Shout out to the rash across my face that will develop the first night I go out partying with my friends again, because by then all of my makeup will be expired. Shout out to your dad for still putting his arm behind the passenger side headrest, nearly hurting himself to reverse his truck, even though he paid for the upgraded backup cam. (laughs) Shout out to millennials judging Gen Z for not knowing how to use a can opener. Joke's on us, though. They'll just use a 3D printer to make themselves lunch. Shout out to (laughs) not using my benefits for the last year and as things open up. Oh, boy. Massages every day. I'm getting new glasses. You need glasses? No. <laughs> Shout out to St. Patrick's Day. The one day a year people are impressed when I jug a, uh, sorry, chug a Guinness in under eight seconds. Every other day of the week, they're worried about me. <laughs> and finally, shout out to dogs casually walking into elevators, even though that entire experience must be very confusing. How did I get here? The 90s and 9 on Play 107. Man, technology is messing with me big time. What do you mean? Well, I just can't believe some of the stuff you can do now. Uh, this one, I know it's little, but it seems really strange to me where I was looking for an old picture because uh, I tweeted about just like how in 2021, a new trend is not having doors on bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And we got a really funny text from a guy that said like, my door hasn't mattered on my bathroom since I had kids. <laughs> they just barge in whenever. So I tweeted something along those lines about like having no privacy when you have a kid. And there's a picture I know that I have in my phone of my kid barging in on me in the bathroom and then like just standing in the doorway screaming. Like crying, she would have been, I don't know, two at the time. But I'm looking for it, Mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous. You can search through photos in your phone by searching things like door or bathroom. No. Or screaming. See, I don't know things like this because I never update any of my stuff ever. Yeah. I don't even know if I have that feature. Well, I'm sure you do, but it's so weird how I take a picture, it's in my phone, and the phone is now recognizing a bunch of things off of How'd you search? the picture. Oh, search. Yeah, so it's Okay, like, what should I type in? Type in rider. Rider. No results. Burn. Hey, take more pictures of me. That's such a burn. Okay, type in, I don't know, sun. Sun. Hey, hey, look like, at this beautiful photo I took in Millwood, Mill Creek. Hey, that's a really nice picture. I know. See? Isn't that strange that you can search that? I can't believe I don't have any photos of you. That's so funny. Whoops. Maybe you have it under a, like a different name, like Stud Man. Maybe. Yeah, it might be saved under that. <laughs> all right, so this was circulating all over the internet yesterday. Mackenzie Scott, who is an American novelist and philanthropist and also helped create Amazon with Jeff Bezos, she has since remarried. A Seattle school teacher. So that is Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, right? Yep. And, and and like they split, when they split, it was pretty much a 50-50, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And she has since donated so much money mm-hmm. to charities, which is really cool to see, but still has a lot of money. A lot of like money. More than any of us would know what to do with. Yeah. So this Seattle school teacher, I can only imagine how unreal the school supplies are going to be in 2022. Oh, good point. I didn't, or like the pizza day. Oh, like, the, ha- the Halloween decorations. <laughs> it's too bad all <gasps> kids like his cheese pizza because, I mean, they could afford some truffle. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> some hot wings. Uh, yeah, that extra is insane. Dip, extra dips on the side. It I would almost it. be worth moving to that neighborhood just because that school will be such so well taken care of. You just move in. Either that or this teacher is just going to be like, peace out, kids. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, probably that. <laughs> Tweet from our boss who almost got in a fist fight out on the road today. We need to uh, see what's going on. Uh, hey, boss, you got a traffic update for us? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, it was insane. I, w- I was going to pick up uh, my kid from my access to drive to school, and I'm going through a school zone, and I noticed this guy right up my tail. I look down, and I'm going slightly about the 30 speed limit. Well, rule breaker. Yeah. Slightly. Anyway, so so I do what I do. I'm like, I'm not going to speed up with this guy. So right. I slow down a little bit, and he gets really mad, and then he aggressively passes me. I honk at the guy to let him know that's not all right, and right. then I 
turn off to go to my ex's, and then he comes around circling looking for me. I'm like, <gasps> well, well, geez, this guy is obviously in a rush to get somewhere, but he's got time for a confrontation with me. That sounds like you were pretty close to a fist fight. How would you have fared? Did he look tough? Yeah. Well, I'm not much of a scrapper. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, you know, I had the phone all ready to record if I had to. I was going to be one of those guys, but... <laughs> I always carry a water bottle on hand because, I. Oh. yeah, you can throw those things pretty good at other vehicles if you need to. Okay, noted for next time. <laughs> My favorite thing to yell at aggressive drivers is this. Slow down, bullet! They love it. Love it. I, I'll remember that next time, Lisa. Perfect. Sounds uh, great. So you're in an okay mood or should we cancel the meeting? Uh, pretty safe to cancel, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. I think this uh, may... Be a topic we can um, dive into a little deeper tomorrow on the show. If you have a crazy road rage story or know somebody who does, make sure you get at us. Lighter and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.